Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to those who are here since a few minutes ago. Um, this is the first time I'm trying this Twitch thing, so can you just type something in the chat and let's see how this works. I think we can start in a couple minutes just in case uh, it takes a bit of time for some to get here. I see that there are 26 people here already, but I think there are um, yeah, like 30 something students, so maybe it's okay if we start a couple minutes later and yeah, in case anyone misses it, the recordings will be available online a bit later. Um, yeah, in the meantime, maybe I can say a few things about myself. Let me put the uh, uh, the big camera. So my name is Ken. Uh, some of you might know me from the um, digital terrain modeling course. I was involved in that for a couple of the lessons and one assignment and providing you with some help in the meantime. Um, I'm a postdoc in the 3DG information group. I work very much with things like um, data structures in 2D, 3D, but also higher dimensions. I like building software. So before I started working as a postdoc, I uh, studied actually computer science and then I did the master in geomatics several years ago. So I'm in the same situation as some of you. Um, so I know the program quite well. Um, yeah, so maybe let's get started with the presentation. I'll put this here. So welcome to this very short introduction to the 3D modeling uh, course. So its course code is Geo1004, a 3D modeling of the built environment. Um, for this course, uh, there will be three people trying to help you here. I'm ma the main one in charge, um, but you will also see Hugo uh, Letu and Ravi Peters for some of the lessons. Uh, if you want more information, we have our own websites. Um, so in the course, we want to cover a few different things, uh, but the main theme of this is how is the built environment model in 3D? Uh, we will cover a few aspects of this. So we will start more from the fundamentals and the sort of concepts that they will be used to build uh, things later on. Uh, after that, uh, most of the course will be spent on data models and data structures. So there are a whole different uh, number of ways to model things in 3D and we will um, spend a lot of the course looking at different ways in which we can model things. Um, yes, from very simple sort of meshes to sort of more advanced stuff that you use more for computer-aided design or for beam modeling. We will have one lesson on reconstruction, so how to build this sort of 3D data in practice, in this case a um, city in a level of detail too. And at the end of the course, we have a couple lessons on conversions from different types of uh, data structures and uh, also about applications. Uh, sorry, I forgot to say, but if you have any questions, uh, just post them in the Twitch chat and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. There's a slight delay between the time I start uh, streaming and uh, what you see, so it might take me a moment to see them. This is a sort of new course. So we, last year, we decided to completely redesign the 3D modeling course. Before there were a few different things. So there was a sort of an acquisition site. So uh, like a surface reconstruction and there was the data modeling side and there was some parts of, on applications. But now we are lucky enough to have uh, different courses for that. So. I think a lot of you will be following the um, uh, 3D computer vision course of Liang Liang. Uh, so before that, you also used to be part of the 3D modeling course. And now we can really focus on the modeling side. So on the 
data structures side and how to process 3D data. Uh, that means that last year the materials were quite rough because we were writing everything from scratch. The idea here is to create a very sort of new uh, 3D modeling course. If you look online, either uh, 3D modeling courses are all about software, so you just click this button and then you get this shape, um, or they're really hardcore more on the computer graphic side, so you are working from, yeah, from basically nothing. The idea here is to have sort of an intermediate level course, so not going uh, so hard into the mathematics behind it, but also not uh, just uh, clicking buttons in software. So we want you to program, we want you to actually build things, but uh, to do it from a practical level and uh, on a, with a focus on the built environment, so how to build uh, 3D cities. Uh, for this year, we are really trying to improve everything. We are focused on improving all of the materials. Uh, you will see in a few minutes what that means. Uh, but it also means that we are working on improving everything as we go. So not everything is all already available on the website, but we will try to have everything available a few days before each lesson. Um, yeah, but there are still some rough edges because the material is quite new. So if you have any sort of feedback, please uh, let me know or let us know. Uh, we want to have uh, better and better material. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, let's go to the formal thing. So the prerequisites for this course are uh, Geo uh, 1000 or some kind of knowledge of uh, scripting or programming in any language. So for those of you who are geomatic students, there's the Python uh, programming course, which had a couple C++ lessons at the end, if I understand correctly. Uh, so you need to know some kind of scripting or programming. It doesn't matter if it's in uh, Python or C++ or any other language, we will do our best to help you. And uh, some, uh, either the Kosher Geo 1002 or some knowledge of uh, GIS. It can be like only using uh, QGIS or RGIS or anything, um, anything really else. Uh, we just want to, to know some of the theory behind this so that you can understand this course better. Uh, there's something that is optional. Uh, so the course Geo 1015, so digital terrain modeling covers complementary topics. Uh, in a way, it's a very similar course to this one. So in DTM, we focus more on 2.5D techniques uh, for the terrains, whereas in this course, we go uh, full on 3D so we can represent a real uh, buildings and cities and in buildings we can also look at things like interior that are not really possible with the things that we do for terrains in 2.5D. Um, this course has a bit of a similar setup also to the digital terrain modeling one so for the theory the idea is that you mostly do self-study so in your own time you can watch uh, videos we have prepared or we are preparing one video per uh, lesson we try to do short videos like um, five to 10 minutes, sometimes we go longer. And this covers the most important aspects of the lesson, or sometimes if we think that there's a tricky part, we try to cover it in the video. Um, we ask you to read the material. So we wrote a handout for each of the lessons at which we are trying to slowly compile into a nicer book on uh, 3D modeling for the built environment. Uh, but the most important thing is that you work on the assignment. So the idea of this course is that you learn mostly by doing, not by reading or by listening to me. That's why we have tried to have as few uh, lectures as possible. Instead, we ask you to work on assignments uh, that cover some of the most important parts of the course. Since there are 14 lessons in the course, you cannot have an assignment for everything because these assignments would be very superficial. Uh, but we try to show you a bit of everything and from that you can easily expand your knowledge uh, later. Um, so if you, you might wonder if there's some uh, videos and self-study material, why do we have these uh, sort of contact hours two times a week for two hours? Uh, the idea is that while you can do everything in your own time, during these contact hours, we will be fully available to help you. So we have, uh, will be online um, we can use uh, these two hours to introduce, uh, like now we are introducing the course, but also to give you a short introduction on the assignment. So what is the general idea, how you can approach them. 
uh, we can answer your questions. Uh, we can discuss some common issues. Like if you see, if we see that some of you are struggling on the same part of the assignment, uh, we can uh, sort of tackle that and explain that in more detail. Uh, we are there to help you with the assignment. So please don't hesitate to uh, contact us and, and really don't hesitate to do it. Um, in uh, normal times, um, I would be there in the lab and we could sit together and look at your code uh, line by line and try to figure out what is going wrong. Uh, now it is not really possible and it's harder for me to approach you and to ask you if it's uh, going well. So please uh, just send a message if anything is going wrong. And even saying I'm completely lost and don't know where to start, that is, that is fine. Um, I will try to help you with that. And one other thing we I can I will give you feedback on the assignments and the exams during these um, contact hours. So it's good if you are available because then you can ask questions live. But if you are not available, all of these recordings will be online, so you can check them later. And yeah, if you have questions at any other time, don't worry about it. Just post them uh, in Discord, and uh, we will answer. We might just take longer because we are not checking it all the time. So how do you make the most of this course? Uh, I mean, the course is already very flexible, so you can do everything asynchronously whenever you want. But this is sort of my advice on how to make it go better. So try to keep up with the course schedule. Uh, there are lessons uh, marked for every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, you can do them whenever you want, but it's better if you more or less try to keep up. If you study the lessons in advance, I don't mean really in depth, but if you just uh, skim what the lesson is going to be about, uh, then you can directly ask questions here. Um, but I said many times, if you have any doubts, ask questions directly. Um, in each of the handouts in the text, uh, we have added some questions at the end. So try to see if you can answer these questions already. If you don't know the answer, if you're unsure, just post something or send me a message and we can discuss them. Also, at the end of most of the handouts, we have added a few um, sources to interesting material written by others or uh, it can be videos on YouTube or anywhere else. Um, if you are interested in the topic or want to know uh, something more, just have a look at one or two of them. And the most important thing uh, that I said is spend more time doing the assignments than uh, during the lesson. So this is not a memorization course. The exams will be open book. You can always check the handouts. Um, just try to understand what is going on. You don't need to memorize every single thing. And instead, really spend the time doing the assignment. So try to learn by doing. There will be 14 lessons in this course. The first one is the uh, sort of introduction and if you go to the course website, you will see that there's already some material on uh, spatial concepts, uh, data models, and data structures that you can uh, follow. I will be responsible for most of the lessons, the ones that are marked with a K here, uh, where Hugo is marked with an H and Ravi with an R. We have a different parts in this course. So uh, what I mentioned, there's this uh, concepts part at the beginning. Then we will go through multiple kinds of data models and data structures throughout most of the course and we finish with uh, higher level uh, things like uh, 3d city models um, beam models plus two sort of specializations on conversions and applications the assignments are three uh, they're all based on programming so that you can uh, learn really by doing these things the programming tasks are using uh, C++ and open source libraries. Um, I have heard that some of you are a bit intimidated by C++ and I think all of us who started with C++ at some point were, so uh, don't hesitate to ask. We can also help you with programming uh, or software related questions like general programming ones. And there's Constantine who can also help you with that as I think he's a student's assistant. Each of the three assignments is worth 20% of the course. Um, the first one will be about voxelization. So starting from a, a 3D city model in the form of a mesh, you will uh, create some voxels, sort of a, like a Minecraft uh, 
representation. And I am working on it and it will be available from next Monday at uh, the same time as the uh, Voxels lesson. Um, the second assignment will be converting the sort of uh, unordered uh, mesh to a city JSON model. So trying to gather the semantics, what is um, uh, a roof uh, part, which are the walls. Um, yeah, these assignments are uh, group assignments, uh, so you can do them in pairs. Uh, I think the last assignment might be done in a group of three, but if you prefer to do them individually, that's also okay. So whatever you want and whatever you prefer uh, doing. Uh, and the third assignment is about applications of a 3D city model. We are still not 100% sure about what to do. It might be calculations of uh, solar potential. So starting from a 3D city model, uh, look at um, the surfaces and see how much sunlight uh, hits uh, that part of the model so that you can estimate whether it's worth to put solar panels in there or not. There will be also two exams in the course. So you can do most of the course asynchronously, but you need to be present uh, on two dates. That is the date of the midterm and the date of the final exam. The midterm is only worth 10% of the final mark. And it's mostly just to help you know uh, the sort of questions that we will ask later on. Uh, it will cover the first eight lessons of the course. And the final exam will cover everything. And it's worth 30% of the final mark. You do need a weighted average of 50% of, on these uh, two exams to pass the course. Um, so yeah, weighted in the sense that there's a 10% for the first one, 30% for the second one. So in case uh, anything or everything goes wrong, there will be receipts for uh, the exams and the assignments. The idea is to have only one receipt for the um, exams, both of them together. If there are uh, only a few of you who fail, which is the most likely thing, uh, I think we'll just do a short oral exam where I ask you about some of the lessons and you answer back. Um, and in case there are more, we will try to prepare a written exam just like the midterm and the normal final exam. There will also be one receipt per assignment. Um, most likely it will be a variation of the original assignment that we might modify some of the tasks. So um, yeah, like last year there was some reconstruction part and instead of just creating like the terrain and the buildings, we ask you to model cars, I think, uh, which were present in a point cloud. So a sort of similar assignment, uh, not to lose the focus on the original one, uh, but with different tasks so that you cannot uh, just reuse the old one. And all of these things will be due on June 18th. So the receipt for the exams will be on June 18th and the due date for the receipt assignments uh, will be due on June 18th. You can choose uh, which assignments to redo. You don't need to redo everything. Like if you got good grades on uh, some of them, you can choose, I will only do one or two of the assignments. All of the information will be given in the course website. Uh, so no Brightspace. I personally don't like Brightspace. I'm not sure how you feel about that. Like, I mean, it's unusable on a phone. <laughs> it, it's uses like over a gigabyte of memory just to render a simple page. So it's uh, annoying in my opinion. So we try to make a simple website for you so that you can follow everything. Uh, on the left side of the website, you can see like the recent news. Every time there's a significant change to the website, I will post something there. And on the right side, there's a timetable. So you can see uh, each of the lessons when they are. Uh, if you if a lesson is already active, uh, you will be able to click on it and see the materials. And on the right side, there are other to dos like uh, now I ask you to read the about page of their website with all the information and from next week you can start with uh, homework assignment number one about voxelization. So um, yeah, please try to go to the website once in a while uh, to check uh, what is going to happen. 
um, yeah, since most of the material is already in the form of videos and handouts, uh, I the intention is not to talk to you every single lesson at the beginning. Although if I have something interesting that I would like to show you, I will try to create a live uh, lesson for that. So if you see the sort of video icon uh, together with a lesson, it means that there will be some information presented live. But again, you don't need to be there if you are not available. You can check it later otherwise. Um, and if you have any questions uh, both about this uh, or about the course or about the assignments, just ask something on Discord. Um, if you click on the top of the bar, there's a Discord button. And I think you're already, well, most of you are already on Discord because of the um, other courses like uh, the DTM course. And I think it's been used in a few others. So, um, let me show you. So if you go to Discord, uh, you will see that there's a Geo1004 text channel. Um, yeah, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, just post a question there and I will get to it or Hugo or Ravi will. Uh, just post something anytime, we will try to answer. There's also a Geo1004 voice channel. I don't think it's that useful, but you're welcome to use it if you want to chat um, during the, um, yeah, anytime while you're working on assignments or during the time of the, um, uh, of the official lessons, if I'm not there uh, speaking, but um, all the information will be there. So anytime there's anything really important, I will also uh, tell you about it uh, there by posting a message. So, yeah, what I said, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. If you ask uh, some general software programming questions, it's fine. Either we will get to it or maybe some of your class mates will, like sometimes you are faster than us in uh, saying the message. Ideally, uh, post something on the text channel rather than uh, through a direct message to us because then everyone can benefit from the answers that we give and yeah if there's a personal issue like you need um uh you're not available for some reason you have a family problem and cannot be there for the exam just let us know um through email or uh, discord uh, dm and i think that's it for me uh, as i said everything is available on the course website so please just Check it there um, and you can already get started on lesson 1.1, which is the lesson for today. Um, it's the very first one. So you, if you're not very sure about what to do, uh, also just send a message. I'll be online on Discord during these two hours and most likely longer. And at the end of the handout for today, you will see a few references. I think the most interesting paper that you might want to read if you are not sure about the concepts in here, there's a, a very old paper by Andrew Frank from 1992 uh, that sort of uh, mentions the concepts from the handout. And I, I find it interesting because many of these things that are there are out of date and many things are very prescient uh, even for today. So try to find out what is still uh, valid and what is really out of date and if you have any questions just let me know I'll see you all online later um, so bye everyone